thanks for your time. Um, you're standing uh, for Mayor. Um, perhaps you'd like to tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, I'm 40 years old. Um, I'm a mother of two lovely daughters. And in January this year, I resigned from my job as a senior civil servant in Whitehall um, to run as an independent candidate in the Mayor of London election. So what made you take that leap um, to run for office? Yeah, um, several reasons. When you're doing a big decision like that, it's not just one reason. So there were quite a few things that led to that decision. Um, one, I think like a lot of people, I was just tired of the fact that the, the election this year was going to be the same old, same old again. Same old people running, same old policies, the same kind of macho fighting between the candidates mm -hmm. and I thought there had to be a better way of doing this. My experience in Whitehall of working with government departments, of understanding how decisions get made and things get done, I think put me in a very good position to actually be able to put myself forward for this. So some people have said actually that's quite a brave move. It is a challenge and it is um, you know, something very different for me, but it's not an illogical move considering where I've come from. Mm -hmm. I think I've got mm -hmm. the knowledge and the understanding to do it quite well. I think when people look at the um, main candidates, we have the same main candidates mm -hmm. as we had last time, um, and there's never really seemed to have been a, a serious cha black challenger, for instance, yeah. uh, for mayor. Um, what do you feel you contribute in terms of the diversity of yeah politics in London. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, one of the other factors for me was having two daughters of my own. I look around and I think there are far too few women in public life. So just an obvious, you know, in terms of diversity, I can bring a more female voice into the campaign. I'm not saying that I want people to vote for me just because I'm a woman, because I think that would just be a ridiculous thing to say. But actually, when I look at Boris and Ken, I don't think they're addressing some of the issues that concern a lot of people in London so actually whether you're from a BME group whether you're kind of a woman struggling with part-time work those kind of issues never get addressed actually so I'm trying to make my campaign a much more inclusive one I'm actively going out and talking to groups who don't often get heard so whether it's dis disability groups who have been fighting for, for years for kind of more accessible transport I'm talking to a lot of um, BME groups who are trying to actually just improve the voter participation mm. in, in their groups as well. So all of those things are really important. And although, you know, I don't want to talk down the other candidates too much, although I'm finding it quite hard to stay <laughs> as positive as I would have liked to, but just the fact that there are still so many pockets of just extreme poverty and mm. deprivation in London, and most of those do affect the most vulnerable groups, I don't think that's right and we should be addressing those kind of issues. So one of the things I've noticed, uh, you, you're backing the Times mm. Cities Bit for Cycling campaign. Yeah. Um, what would you do in London to address the, or what do you see the problems uh, yeah. cyclists are facing in London today? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, I think on the cycling one, again, you know, the figures speak for themselves. So you, you have, I think it's now 11 people who were killed last year. Nine of those were women, interestingly enough. So there is something, again, about the way we use our roads and spaces which just isn't right. Um, I've signed up to the Times Manifesto, so all of the pledges in there I think are absolutely right and I would look to implement those if I became mayor. But more than that, I think there's, if you look at other cities, they have a more creative approach to their urban spaces. So it's not just actually about cycle safety. I'm also saying we should share our spaces more creatively for pedestrians, for cyclists and for road users. So although I'm behind the cycling campaign, I absolutely am, I wouldn't say those are the only needs that need to be addressed. So sure. actually for pedestrians as well, you know, we, we need to look at whether we can share our spaces more. And there are some really creative ways that you can do that. One of the uh, policies that you've got on your website is about hit squads on London's unused spaces. Mm. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What's a hit squad? Yeah. And what's it, an unused space? Yeah, unused spaces, when people talk about the housing issues in London, it's often about building more and more houses on new sites. And actually for environmental reasons, for efficiency reasons, I'm saying that's right sometimes, but before that we should look first at the old buildings we already have, the spaces that were previously used that are no longer being used. So actually as a mayor I would work with each borough much more proactively to say let's target some of those areas first and see if we can regenerate those and bring those back to life. <laughs> Taking that to the extreme, I would say that there's nothing we shouldn't consider. So, for example, Battersea Power Station, you know, a huge prime space 
38 acre site, I think mm -hmm. it is. It's been lying there for 30 years now. It's crumbling, it's costing lots of money just to keep it from falling down. I know it's an iconic building, but actually I'm saying, is the time now right to be looking at that and saying, could we put that space to better use? How many homes could you build? How many, you know, service centres, libraries, those kind of things, could you make that space a much more useful space mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. actually opening up the debate about could we actually remove Battersea Park? Um, one of the other uh, policies that you have is uh, on zero tolerance on yeah. litter and dog mess. Yeah. Again, um, I'd be quite interested to hear what you mean by zero tolerance. Yeah. This is, um, as I've been going around talking to people, I absolutely recognise that people want the big issues dealt with. And so it's quite right that the candidates are talking about what they might do to fundamentally change transport, big investment decisions. The mayor has to be doing those things. But actually what struck me as I talked to people is they also care about the day-to-day -day things that affect their real local areas. So I see the mayor as coming up with kind of a package of measures which I'm saying would, would be kind of better neighbourhood measures. Mm -hmm. So it, whether that's around um, dogs me mess, which a lot of people say to me, you know, they really don't like that in their area, they don't like that, they don't like litter, they don't like the streets just being dirty. Combine that with kind of street lighting, all of those kind of issues, they're as important to people as policing on their streets. Mm -hmm. you know, day to day, that's what a lot of people worry about, and it's the perception that somebody cares about their neighbourhood, mm -hmm. I think. So I would like to work with boroughs again to say, we do the big stuff and we do the little stuff, and you can do both. So you mentioned the big picture. Uh, last week, Boris Johnson announced a cut in the council precept, a tax cut. What do you think about that? I think he was probably looking for a good headline, first mayor to, to reduce the council tax in that way. It doesn't amount to very much. For an average Londoner, I think it was £3.10, so you can't really do very much with that. But every cut is good, so you know, don't want to put it down too much. Um, but I think there's a bigger, a much bigger vision that a creative mayor could have in terms of addressing public services and protecting vital public services in these really difficult times. So I know, having worked in Whitehall, for example, that you know, local authorities, councils, boroughs, they're all really struggling to maintain the levels of public services that they would like to maintain. Um, I've had people ask me, what am I going to do about library closures? What am I going to do about youth clubs shutting down? I actually think a mayor could work much more closely with boroughs to come up with some ways of bringing those services together in a more efficient way. Mm -hmm. So I know the post office is starting to look at this already and actually it wouldn't take too much to start linking up some of these organisations and say within a borough could you for example combine some of your public services in one space so you have more of a hub, a kind of service hub where you could have a library working alongside a job centre, you could offer some of that venue and space to your charities who are all struggling. Mm -hmm. So you can have a much, a, a real different vision for public services in the boroughs. It's big and it wouldn't happen overnight, but actually we're in such difficult times, I think you need a much more visionary approach to this. And you absolutely have to put protecting those services right at the heart of your vision. One of the difficulties you're going to have as an independent candidate for mayor is that the, the press and the public in general tend to see this election as about the mayor yeah. and it's really the Ken and Boris show. Yeah. How do you overcome that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. My single biggest challenge is to, is to get my voice heard in this campaign. It doesn't help, you know, the BBC and the ITV have got the rules that they don't like to break around giving new voices um, a kind of platform. I'm, you know, my team and myself are doing our best. We've had quite good media coverage already. I would like more. I think getting onto TV is a big break. But I just think um, there is this sense that people are tired of the same old candidates fighting the same old battles. So with not too much help, I think people would really welcome some new voices um, in there. You know, there's a national sense that people are disillusioned with party politics. So actually, if you can bring some independent voices in, and the key for, for me is that the mayor role doesn't have to be party political. So it's absolutely crucial, I would say, that we kind of help that, you know, help the public realise that there are different ways that you can do this, and there are different opinions and different views that should be heard. Following on from that, um, obviously it is difficult to get into the, to the <coughs> it is difficult to get into the media more generally. 
But without a party machine mm. of thousands of people knocking on mm. doors and all the rest of it, aren't you very reliant on on the media? And they're the very people who are reluctant to give I you... I know, I know. It's a bit of a catch-22, isn't it? I'm reliant on the media. I'm also trying to use social media quite a lot. So I've been on a bit of a learning curve, you mm. know. I started... Um, tweeting in January and I've now got my followers followers up thanks to Peter Jones who helped me a little bit there and called on, on people to kind of start following me so I'm trying to use those channels I don't have you know massive funding behind me my volunteer base is growing very quickly luckily because once people hear what I'm saying they like what I'm saying and so we are getting a groundswell of support but again that's kind of my point that I think um, I want to try and show there are different ways of doing this and that you don't need a big party machine behind you because that's the world I came from in Whitehall and it's the world I didn't like so I don't want to replicate it in my campaign I want to try and stay an honest independent in this. so uh, the last question um, other than getting elected yeah what would you hope to achieve out of running this your campaign yeah um, I'm absolutely focused on getting elected so I'm glad that you said that at the beginning I want to um, achieve a voice for people who don't usually get heard. I want to show that you can have a more inclusive system where people from whatever background, whatever life experiences, feel like they can actually have a say and shape the future of London. If I can achieve that, then I'll be incredibly happy at the end of this process. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time.